something of an unconventional path into the driver's seat for Wollongong-based Gary Carson. After being a team owner, he's now turned to driving, and his previous time spent lending a hand under the bonnet is helping fine-tune his Ford XR8. And in, in the Utes, people might think there's not a lot to do to them, but just little tweaks here and there will get you half a second, which is a hell of a lot in the Utes because we're so close. Last year, Carson and Paul Williams fought for the Rookie of the Year title all the way to the final round in Sydney. Williams took that honour, but Carson, who currently sits 10th in the championship, is benefiting from lessons learned during his first full year of racing. You can get sort of overall with all the, uh, the, the spectators and the fans. You turn up to Adelaide and you're racing in front of 300,000 people and then you rock up to Bathurst and it's like, whoa, this is Bathurst, so it's pretty cool. But yeah, coming back this year, I'm sort of a little, more, a little bit more patient and sort of know what to expect. So we're off to a good start this year, um, better than last year. And yeah, look, just hoping to, to keep the good times rolling. Last race of the weekend, 11 laps is on the menu, and I'm guessing that we've had the entree. The main course in the dessert is coming up this time. Full field ready to run in this final race of the weekend. The grid is determined by an aggregate of the first two race results, but we've got to do a bit of a clean-up because Grant Johnson copped a 13-second time penalty from race two, which dropped him from 12th to 15th for the contact with Pitha, but it doesn't move him off the front row of the grid. Kim Jane, nine-point championship penalty for that hit on Andrew Fisher. The same penalty for Brad Patton, who starts back in 13th in the Wicked Falcon for that touch with David Cedars. So a few hands have been slapped, but they're all on the grid and ready to go for race three. A busy, busy time for the race director, in this case, James Taylor, but uh, all those penalties you've mentioned, I think, were justified. And is this dessert? I think this is more like after-dinner drinks. <laughs> I can't wait. George Elliott, Noel Edge, down the back of the grid. 32, 16 Holdens, 16 Fords. Final race of the weekend, and the same old two on the front row. Elsgood and Johnson, they have been the superstars of Ute racing this year. White and black, Ford and Holden, you've got it all. Race three is underway in Townsville, and the power of the Commodore is just too much off the grid. Not only the extra grunt or the extra talk of the Holden, but Jack Ellsgood as he let the clutch out. There's a bit of axle tramp. The back of the car bounced, but on board now. The DBA on board. Oh, lock up from Fisher into the back of Jeremy Gray. But he managed to get it stopped. Concertina, nose to tail. Top two getting away. Everyone cutting the corner to get away. Look at this. Three wide on the run of turn three. Where do I go? In the middle, right, left. Ah, it's just right into the back. Oh, oh, oh touch, touch, Dodgers. Bangs into Andrew Fisher, who's had a dirty weekend. And look at this, they're all clambering over one another. Four wide on the run through Reed Park. Somehow, they're all still in the bitumen. Oh, I don't know how, and I'm just grateful it's Reed Park Townsville, not Reed Park Bathurst. Can you imagine? Oh, I'd rather not, actually. SS Inductions in car, Dodgers. Closing in, Charlie Kovacs, the Wilson Security Commodore, makes a great move on Gary Baxter. This car, at various stages this weekend, has been hooked up. Great performance in qualifying. Good to see him back in form. Ryle Harris, the bonnet is again... I don't want to use that word, but he's in the walls again. Well, at least it's not flapping. You can see where he's going this time. But he's got major, major damage. There's Steve Hodges in the history truck seats Commodore right behind the Eagle Pro car of Nandy Kiss. But Johnson is the man leading the way. Ellsgood second, Jeremy Gray in third, David Cedars next in the New Lawn Falcon. But it's the familiar suspects up front. They are the class of the field. There's Cedars, Kim Jane, back on board with Craig Dottis. Looking back at the Kiwi, Chris Pitha, who started from position 11. And he's throwing it up the inside. Dirty track. Big down change, and you see in the background a big brake lock up by Andrew Fisher. Big understeer, allowing Gary McDonald for the switchback. Up to turn three, they turn right here across a bridge that leads them back into Reed Park, where so many fans have gathered this weekend. This is an in-car, Yokohama replay, Rob Jarvis down at turn two. Goes to the outside. Ben Cabbage to the left. Everything was looking good then. He was just minding his own business. That's just incredible. 
Look at that! Uh, let's have a look. Oh, he gets the nudge there. That's young Graham Edwards who was involved. Brad Patton gets wiped out. Steve Hodges has turned the wipers on. I don't think he meant to do that. There's a lot of things you're not supposed to do that these guys just don't care about. Here's a replay of Andrew Fisher, who saved it well. Oh. He, he very easily could have been stuck in the middle of the road and the track blocked. And could have taken out half the field. Yeah. In fact, the other one at turn one were very lucky not to have lost half the field. This is Pitha leading this freight train. McNally, Dontis, McDonald, Fisher, Kovacs, Paul Williams. We haven't seen much of Paul, but he's been very strong this weekend, the young West Aussie, really getting to grips with things. I'm just willing Charlie Kovacs on. Charlie and I had a great history against each other as competitors when I raced in the U category. I'm a big fan, always big attitude. Look at that, bouncing off the curb. Who says that 60 years old slows you down? Okay, fine, he's not 60, but he's still good. <laughs> I've got to say, too, it's been a couple of years since you raced in the Ute Series. Have the boys got wilder, or has it always been like this? I just think they're just as wild, but there's more of them that are competitive enough to be wild. So when I raced, there was probably 16 guys that really got into it. Now there's 32 that just get there, get into it, tear the panels off, swap paint, share stickers. Are we going to see more of it here? We're right on board with Kim Jane, the new line in car in the Bob JT Mart's Commodore. And look at the run. David Cedars was slow. So the Newlong camera looks at the Newlong car. Very carefully. Blow the car. Try not to pop the car. Just keep the car flowing. Probably the last thing you want heading into that. Oh, Jane under brakes. Locked up. Come on, give us contact. Last thing you want though is your is your crew on the radio as you're heading into turn one side by side with someone giving the last bit of instruction. <laughs> that is your fault. Give us some contact. Haven't you had enough of the last two races? You can never have enough. If it's close racing, I want more of it. Charlie Kovacs flying the flag for the victory. Go, no, Charlie! Come on, Charlie! Said all, said all. Got the move on Craig Donis. Gary McDonald had it all locked up and who got hit? Andrew Fish. He's been hit by everybody today. And he got another one down at turn 13. But did manage to hang on to the spot. A lot of action on this corner, and again, you see the IC commissal on Grove. Boom, into the wall. Tell you what, you let the car run wide, you can easily squeeze him into the wall. Proof of it. And this fight's been going, not just in this race, but, but pretty much all weekend between Cedars and Jane, and in the end, the Commodore managed to grab the spot. So there's been plenty going on while we were away. Back to live action, and here is Fisher hanging on from Dontis, then Williams, then Baxter, Carson having a look at the back of Gary McDonald. Oh, but slowing. That was a rough move. He's, what he's done there is he sacrificed his exit speed and he's lost another position, this time to... Peter Burnett. Oh, you know why you didn't recognise him? He was on his wheels this time. Ah. Carson wide, just losing a bit of rhythm. And now Nandy Kiss will make the lunge, turn seven at the chicane. Oh, Carson oh. late under brakes, he's missed the apex. I think he gave him some room there, but Nandy didn't come in through and put the nose there. Which is very unusual. Not exactly Ute spec, is it? Fight for 15th, Carson 15th, and Nandy kissed Charlie O'Brien just back behind. But Gary Carson really feeling the pressure. You can see his car's been beaten up a bit, but he's really missing apexes. I wonder if something's wrong with the car or, or if he's just starting to lose his rhythm. Not much wrong with Paul Williams, gets the move. Ooh, I thought there was going to be a touch there, but Dodgers is slow, so Gary Baxter will get the big, big run. Whoa, oh, top Carson, of screen. Whoa, 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 ran wide at turn 13. Three laps remaining, three laps remaining, concentrate. Got wrong. I think the tire's gone off, we'll get uh, the wrong. Then we first, first voice there was Jamie, Gary's wife. And Gary, I told you not to marry her. <laughs> Tell her bossing you around already. I don't but know. So sounds like there may be a problem with the tyre, which we suggested that may be a problem. I don't know too many race drivers who have their wife on the headset. Brave That's man. Oh, something a little different. Look at Baxter. Really having a run here at Dontis and Williams. Williams putting in a great performance this weekend. You saw the attitude Whoa. on the car there. And speaking of attitude. <laughs> oh, that has been a place that David Cedars has gone too many times this weekend. What's, his, what's his nickname? He needs a new one to see this guy. It's got to be attitude, something, some such thing. But you're right, Vice break in car with Pitha. Well, you, you do know his nickname. The Ute category does give all the drivers nicknames. It's sideways and, well, I don't, ah. think, I don't think we change it. I think it's appropriate. Absolutely appropriate. He's made it stick this weekend. Sideways, see this. We're right on board with Chris Pitha, the Kiwi. Well, we thought about another gear then. Thought about another move in the wrong spot. 
why don't you go to the switchback? You're not going to make the outside work. Good move by Cedars there. He took what we would call a shallow exit and blocked that switchback move by Pitha, which he'd probably been thinking about. Will he go left or right? He'll just stay behind for the moment. He's going to look to the left. Bit of clear air. He'll go to the right. He'll go to the right. But Cedars won't give him the room, but he's still going to try it. Oh, no oh. way. But it gets Cedars looking in the mirror, wondering where he's going to go. Oh, you missed the apex, Pitha. Come on. Oh, look at the oh. He just squeezed between Cedars and the wall. Oh, no! <laughs> he tried to sneak across and cover the line and very nearly ended in tears, and Cedars gives him a punch back. That is one <laughs> smack uppercut. That was brilliant stuff by Pitha. Very committed, very decisive. Look at the car bouncing off the curb. The attitude. Pitha is obviously filthy from the race earlier today. But, hey, try to the right. Is that what the indicator's about? No way. Pitha wants to get away, but Cedars applying the blowtorch. Look at the bounce off the curb. Gentle on the power down, boys. How the hell are these two not in the fence? That had the hallmarks of a crash waiting to happen, and somehow they've made it through, and this time by they've got one lap left. Look at that! <laughs> Ripped it! <laughs> I tell you why they're not in the wall. Two experienced races, two quality races. They don't mind taking an inch, but they give it to. I reckon that's really hot stuff. Another lock up down at 13. Cedars will be slow. This was the replay for Yokohama. The run to turn three. Pitha's trying to sneak across and cover for turn three, but Cedars' nose is there. Well, he stood his ground, which he had a right to do. You just see him come across. Brilliant stuff, great car control. And if Pitho had ended up in the fence, that was his fault. Absolutely, no, no question. But do you know what Cedar says? What are you doing? <laughs> you know what? After the race, I'm sure Cedars will appreciate that was a genuine and fierce battle, which he lost, but great performance by both of them. No fierce battle here. Grant Johnson, I don't know what we've got to do to stop this man. He's going to have some fun. Oh, Turn 12. <laughs> Sideways, the West Aussie. He has been dominant again. Again, Jack Ellsgood has given him a fight. But the Commodore is too strong, and Grant Johnson off the turn at turn 13. And, and John Patros's team, the high-tech team, first and second this week this weekend. Brilliant performance. But you know what? Winning this race does not win the round. But Johnson, looking at the numbers, it's going to Ellsgood. That's unbelievable. Ellsgood will be happy to be on the top step, but the battles for the minor positions are not over yet. Baxter working hard on the back of Dontis. He won't get there. It's been another great fight right throughout the field. Paul Williams, another stunning drive from the young West Aussie. He finishes in 10th spot, and it's again pretty even. Red and blue in the top 10. They couldn't catch Grant Johnson. Andrew Fisher, ninth after all sorts of contact this weekend. Baxter McDonald, Peter Burnett, great drive in 14th. Steve Hodges and Scott Jennings, who's had a tough weekend in the Sandboy Chips Commodore. They rounded out the top 20. Patton and Jarvis involved in all sorts of drama, but the man up front, Grant Johnson, takes the win. But we've got to ask, what's the secret to this success? All of a sudden, I've just kind of clicked and I'm just driving a little bit harder and driving it off the rear. And um, sometimes it's sideways, but other times it's quick. So it's good fun. And it puts Johnson on the podium. Second for the weekend behind Ellsgood. Jeremy Gray rounds out the top three. But for Ellsgood, he's a winner without winning. Well, yeah, scored good point, points all throughout the weekend and, uh, yeah, unfortunately didn't have quite have the car speed of Grants and um, I just had to settle for second. It's both in race one and three, but, you know, ultimately, you know, I came here to win uh, the outright and that's what I've done, so pretty happy. And he's closed the margin down to 21 points now to Grant Johnson. Andrew Fisher, David Cedars, they're still in the mix. There's a long way to go in this championship. Let's give away some prizes. Let's give away some cash. Charlie Kovacs picks up the Hard Charger Award. He passed 21 newts in race two and collects $500 for his troubles. Paul Williams, the winner of the Champion Spark Lunch Whole Shot Award, $500 for the best start of the weekend. Great job from the young West Aussie. He was on it this weekend. David Cedars leads the way in the Rookie of the Year Award, but Jeremy Gray's podium result helps close the margin in that championship. But the winner is clear, Cooper's clear, Jack Ellsgood.